Mike Parker with you and really excited to be back again coming off a bye and welcoming in our distinguished panel, Angie Machado, publisher of Beaver Blitz. We're going to find out some exciting news from Angie here in a moment. And of course, former Beaver Tim Ewis, an NFLer coming off the bye as well. And I too had a bye, which gave me the chance to just revel in watching college football and future Beaver opponents. We'll be talking about Washington State specifically as we go tonight. Coming up on the Palouse Saturday, Martin Stadium at 7.30. But Angie, let me start with you. We're going to get into how the Beavers as a program benefited for this week's game against Washington State, but the program itself had a good bye week. Yeah, I mean, it's a bye week, and uh, I spent it covering a, a commitment. The Beavers picked up a commitment from 6'1", 210-pound linebacker from Tulsa, Oklahoma. Booker T. Washington, same school as Michael Doctor. Jonathan Willis is the mm. young man's name. Talking to folks in Oklahoma, they said he's fast, he's athletic, probably maybe even more so than Michael Doctor. Wow. So, um, you know, a, a big, you know, a big prospect for the Beavers. Now, that's good news. And, Tim, speed at linebacker in the age we're living in, you can't have enough of it. Mike, linebackers that can run sideline to sideline are like gold. And, and Oregon State's had a great tradition of those guys. So to hear that we have another commitment, another guy we're bringing into the fold, that's phenomenal. Yeah, I always look at guys like Nick Barnett that could run sideline to sideline. So valuable. How did you use the bye week? How did Tim Ewis benefit from a bye? Did Man, you? I, I was out in Bayshore and Walport. A little vacation time, for you. did a little crabbing, hung out with the family. There's this beautiful thing, and it's called an iPhone and the <laughs> apps that go along with it. So I could pull up different apps for different games that are being shown, follow along on my phone while I'm out there crabbing and hanging out and on the beach. And you can take the game with you these days. It was so fun to watch a lot of the games. And as I said earlier, just have a chance to watch other teams slugging it out. The Beavers get back to it with Washington State this weekend. A very intriguing matchup, particularly given Washington State's big win in Berkeley and all the yards that Connor Halliday threw for. We'll get to more on that as we go. But from a physical standpoint, one of the biggest things the Beavers had, a week to get guys back, including running back Storm Woods. Coach Riley was asked just about getting Storm back in the fold. He's played a lot of football, you know, lots of carries, lots of football last year and even the start of this year. So I think he'll be, he'll be in the swing of it pretty close. Yeah. Coach, what's Storm add to the offense this week? Well, you know, another good player. You know, we've got uh, we've, with with Storm and Teron together there, we have good depth and two good players playing. Well, Coach Riley, obviously happy to have Storm Woods and his versatility back. Tim, how do you think getting Storm back will affect the Beavers' quest to ramp up the running game this weekend? Well, I really like Storm Woods coming out of the backfield, especially catching the screens. He's done a great job with those. And, and not that Tehran has not, but I think Storm just has a feel for it. There's some chemistry there. I also like that we're getting some of those O-linemen back and, and having more of a kind of a power speed runner shooting the gaps. I, I really like Storm in that role. He's got 3.4 yards carry this season, and, and sometimes it's a pile of dust on a handoff, <laughs> but he also is the guy that has the ability to break the big one, Mike. Well, speaking of power and Grant Anger, who has been out, Grant Anger's back. We'll start at right guard on the Palouse, and Coach Riley was asked about the impact of getting Grant back. Well, it should it should help all the way around. You know, the other guys, Grant Bays went in there and did a nice job earlier. Roman Sapolo did a nice job. So we had some guys fill in and do well. But Grant is a, he's a fifth year senior and, and uh, poised for a good year this year. So it's good to have him back. The veteran presence of Grant Anger will clearly be of help to the Beavers in trying to improve the run game. But Angie, they did have to pull the red shirt. They made the choice to anyway at San Diego State in a crisis with all the injuries. So Sean Harlow playing, has played both tackle positions, will likely start at right tackle against Washington State. That's a big challenge against that aggressive front. But Harlow's a guy they really liked, and his time has come. Har Harlow's done a great job. I mean, Tim, don't you? I mean, he's really stepped up. When, you know, they needed to. There was no option there. They had to pull his shirt at San Diego State, and he's done a fantastic job. And so now you're getting Gavin Andrews back, who was kind of the projected starter there mm -hmm. at the beginning, of, you know, in fall camp. Now my question is, do you try to redshirt Gavin Andrews and let him, you know, get that year to be fully healthy, back in shape? Oh, they have some options. Tim, how have you felt that Sean Harlow, you know, the tough kid, Kavanaugh likes his toughness. How's he graded out technically? I think he did a great job. And, and 
I'll go back to the idea that pass protection at this level is much easier to learn and understand if you have a good basic background than run blocking is just because of that hip drive that it takes to move. You're going from moving maybe a 190, 200 pound defensive end in high school to a 270 pound defensive end in college. And, and so for him to, to get to be a real people mover at that tackle position is going to be tough. But having a guy like Storm Woods back, we need to get a longer run than nine yards out of him for the season. Coming up later on Talking Beavers, Brandon Cooks joins us on the set. But next, who is Washington State? We'll discuss this and more coming up on Talking Beavers. It's time for our standard TV and appliance rewind where we look back to an incredible game last year by Jordan Poyer. Jordan with three interceptions in the football game, victimizing both Jeff Toole and Connor Halliday in the Beavers' rugged 19-6 victory over the Cougars at Racer Stadium. It featured a pick in the game as well by Anthony Watkins for a total of four Beaver interceptions, three for the great Jordan Poyer. Three sacks as well for Scott released the Crichton. He was released for three big sacks, Tim. But just looking at Jordan Poyer, what a playmaker he was. All three of those big-time plays. Huge plays. That's what made him a draft pick ultimately, Mike. And you do have to go back to Crichton's sack. So he had two on one series that lead to those quarterback pressures and really poor decision making in the long run. That was a year ago this year as we take a look at the Washington State and California box score from just last week. Halliday setting records for pass completions, attempts, and just 10 yards off Alex Brink's 531 passing yards against the Beavers in 2005 at Reeser Stadium. So an unbelievable jump that Connor Halliday has made, Angie, that makes this game intriguing with the brilliant arms of Halliday and Mannion. Oh, it's going to be, I mean, I see a shootout between those two. It's going to, I mean, Mike Leach has pretty much made it known that he doesn't care if he runs or not. <laughs> Yeah, Mark Banker said, you know, in preparing uh, that Leach doesn't really like to run the football per se. And, Tim, they haven't run it well. But Leach doesn't need to. And, and much like the Beavers in their short passing game, a lot of the, the types of throws that Halliday makes approximates a run game. They really do. When you're throwing the ball for under five yards, Mike, they get that quick game, those underneath crossing routes, those give the chance to the receiver to run downfield and really do take the place of that quick hit run offense and and the thing that I, people said I was crazy last year on this show when I said Leach was the guy to watch in this in this northern division as yeah. a coach and I said he doesn't just know how to motivate he knows how to inspire and you saw him get rid of some guys and and clean the program up and you see the results of it this year the way he's inspiring players Mike and you're talking about a guy that came into Oregon State had really a terrible game and threw for 500 yards last week Two receivers caught, you know, over 100 yards in, in receptions. Uh, there's no doubt that what Mike Leach has done is inspire, as you say, Tim. Angie, he's, he's more than just an air raid aerial guy. He's a motivator, and he's got these guys they bought in. They went to a very rigorous Spartan training camp in Lewiston at a junior high in the heat in the offseason. Connor Halliday says we're not spending as much time in the sand pit as we used to, whatever that may mean. But it means that Mike Leach has the guys bought in. This is a very t dangerous Washington State team. Definitely. You know, you talk about buying. It takes me back to that 2000 Fiesta Bowl team when Dennis Erickson, actually it was 99, the year they made the bowl game. He got the guys to buy in. Mm -hmm. And so here's a, here's a team. When you get the, the coach gets the team to buy in, good things can happen. And, Tim, what's impressed me the most when we talk about who Washington State is, what they're all about, we start with Leach and one of the acknowledged pioneers of the air raid attack that he learned with Hal Mummy and others learned at BYU with Norm Chow. I mean, it's an interesting story. Leach himself, a fascinating story. But that defense for the Cougars and that front four in particular, pretty salty. They are. They really are a, an upfield rush attack. Their 2D tackles are just big people. And they like to push guys around. They got some great rush ins. We'll look at one of them in the breakdown coming up, Mike. But that front seven sets the tone for the rest of the defense. And even though we do acknowledge how tough Mike Bresky's defense is, and they are, still, when you think about Washington State football, you think about the air raid attack, and the Beaver defense needs to be prepared for Connor Halliday throwing often, getting it out quickly. 
And who better to talk to about that than Ryan Murphy, Beaver Safety, about what the Beavers are up against on the Palouse this weekend. We know that they like to pass the ball a lot, but we can't, um, we can't get too distracted about what they do. We have to focus on what we do. And, uh, I mean, if everybody executes, that's our game plan, and that, that will help us lead, win this game. What is the nature of their passing game? It looks like Connor gets it out really quickly. What kind of challenges does it pose for all of you guys? Uh, I mean, they, they pick on a lot of weaknesses. We saw that in Cal. Once their third string uh, corner got in, they picked on him. Um, I mean, they, they, these guys, they, they have great athletes at the receiver positions. Um, and uh, the quarterback, I mean, he's a, he's a, he's a good quarterback. I mean, he's smart with his decisions. Um, he tries to get the ball out as fast as possible. Um, and he uh, comes to the line reading his keys. Mike Leach, their head coach, said that you guys played a very good game defensively last year. And he said that they're not real tricky. I mean, do you guys feel like you hang your hat on on base stuff, or do you feel like, well, they, they can think what they think, but we can mix our looks? I mean, we, we can mix our looks. Um, I mean, it is what it is. Last year was last year. Uh, you know, our record last year doesn't matter right now. So we're, we're going up in Pullman at 7 o'clock and, and ready to play Beaver football. You feel like they are better, that Halliday and the offense is, is better, producing better than what you saw here in the game last year? Uh, yeah, I believe so. I mean, their, their record speaks for itself. They were in it against uh, Auburn. Um, the only slip up they had was against Stanford. But other than that, they, they really control games. And uh, I mean, they're a better team. They're a much more improved team. And we, we know that, you know, there's no uh, slacking against these guys because these guys are going to come out hot, come out ready to play and amped up. Finally, Ryan. You've already touched on some of the elements late Pullman big crowd dad's weekend for them. What's this game all about from the Beavers perspective the the type of mentality you need to take into this game. I mean we, we just just execute if we if we could get guys doing their assignment on that play we have a chance to play the next play. And uh, I mean it, it, it's, a, it's a big atmosphere that we're going into. And uh, uh, all we got is ourselves. You know, we, we, we're going to come up, go up on a plane together, leave on a plane together. So, I mean, we, we're just a family. We're just a unit. And we're going to leave as a unit, come as a unit and leave as a unit. The very talented and cerebral Ryan Murphy talking about trying to make sure that in the midst of an emotional, hard-fought game, Mike Cavanaugh said, and anytime you play the Cougs, it's a street fight. <laughs> but you got to execute and keep your emotions in check. And... Angie Ryan Murphy is going to be a big part of if the Beavers come out of there with a win he'll be a big part of oh it. huge you know I mean I had him as one of the top defensive backs in the league before the season started mm -hmm. he's quietly had two interceptions the past two games so you know all the talk's been on Steven Nelson the newcomer little flashy interceptions there but watch Ryan Murphy I, I, I think he might have a big game this well week. we'll be watching Murphy and we'll be watching Nelson and we'll be watching Reynolds and oh, Martin Heather, and the linebacker I mean everybody time. Tim everybody's got to be a part of coverage against this offense they do Mike you call the air raid four or five wide every play rarely are you gonna see a, a three back set and a guy like Murphy 26 tackles on the air he's been getting more he's been doing a better job of wrapping up in space but Leach will find those one-on-one -on -one matchups and he'll try to take advantage of them so those guys will have to be great in space do great job wrapping up. And as Murph said, that last week Washington State went after an inexperienced Cal corner often and hurt him. So the Beavers have a big job ahead of them on the Palouse. Later on Talking Beavers, Brandon Cooks joins the panel. But coming up next, Tim Ewis breaks down the Cougars and gives us his take on what the Beavers need to do to secure the win in Pullman. And right now we're talking actually Cougars and Bears. As we talk Beavers, the Cougars and Bears, Tim, threw it a combined 129 times in Berkeley this past weekend. It was an unbelievable expedition. Connor Halliday throws for 521 yards. Cal's Jared Goff for 504. The ball was in the air a lot. It's probably going to be a lot like that this weekend on the Palouse. But you've dialed up some plays that kind of give us a feel of how that game played out. You know, Mike, all three of the plays we're looking at are from the first quarter where it really was still a great ball game. And, and we're going to look at both the offensive and defensive side of the ball. Cougars and Bears, oh my, here we go. <laughs> first quarter. Here we go. We want to look at the safety at the top of the screen. He's kind of showing blitz right here, Mike. 
Now he backs out. Holiday knows it's no longer a blitz, so he's going to eye the safety at the bottom of the screen. He's looking at this player right here, trying to freeze him. What he's doing is establishing a one-on-one -on -one down at the bottom with his best receiver, Marks. He was just added to the Blinikoff watch list. Mm -hmm. Perfectly thrown ball. Receiver saves room on the sideline, Mike. And watch how he goes up and gets that thing. He saves room to fall out of bounds, gets that foot in. Really well played. And again, Halliday with that recognition a year into the system now and, and sitting at the feet of Mike Leach. That type of play, he may not have been able to make with consistent last year. He's doing it this season. Agreed. And when you get that rush on him, that's what makes a difference. And right there, he was he had great protection. He had time to make his read and throw the ball and get it out on time. The Beavers will have to, just like we said last year, release the Crichton, get pressure on him. This is a great clip we're going to look at next of Washington State's defense and the pressure that they can get. Our offensive line is going to have to be sharp, Mike. We got the two big D tackles inside, and we got a five-man protection blocking four guys. Look at this D end, Palacio. Watch how he runs the hoop, Mike. We always talk mm -hmm. about running that hoop. Look at him. Get after the quarterback. He's around the corner. He's got great speed. Our tackles are going to have to play really, really well. That dip and rip action he has, so nice. I'm really glad that, that Grant Eager is going to be back in the game to help a guy like Harlow on the calls for when we have those five, six, and seven-man protections. You know, we, we talk a lot about how good their offense is, but that play revealed that the defense that we've already talked about a little bit too with Mike Bresky coordinated it. They've got some very aggressive and talented players and Halliday back to him for a moment Tim that the week before when Washington State struggled Stanford brought a lot of pressure and got to him hit him hard knocked him out of the game. The kid showed his toughness and metal by continuing to play on so we saw Jared Goff get hit. You've got another play though where the Cougs didn't quite get it right to, to your point though Mike those guys were hitting the quarterback all day and right. every every touchdown he wasn't even celebrating he was walking off with his hand on his ribs and yeah he was hurt holding yeah. his head he was hurting so you know the Beavers can make plays now this is a great opportunity to make a play in the pass game you got a three-man receiver side we got singled up on the bottom Mike He's going to run outside. He's just going to take that corner's eyes. We got our next two receivers, both running in routes. Look at this safety coming down into the box, Mike. Mm -hmm. right. He tries to go jam that receiver. He bangs him a little bit, but he misses. It leaves a wide open receiver down the middle. So earlier on, you had Washington State playing a very straight 4-3 cover two, just using their pure rush to get to the quarterback. Here they try to bring heat on the quarterback quarterback slices and dices for a big game so the Beavers will have opportunities to make plays in that pass game you know, Tim uh, with Jared Goff a true freshman and a special kid being able to read that and throw for 504 yards Angie there has to be a sense of confidence I would think that if given time as Goff was on that play that Sean Mannion can make some plays against this talented but but defense that gave up 504 yards oh, to count exactly I mean you know Dion Buchanan is you know one of their DBs that's outstanding like you said the defensive line but if Oregon State's offensive line can hold they can you know Sean Mannion will have have some fun well let's talk about that and let's get to our game balls I know we've got a football around here somewhere as always two hands nice catch Timmy let me start first can I do that today take the honor speaking of the offensive line Today's Wilson Motors game balls are in the form of predictions. I think it's the first time we've ever predicted a game ball. I'm predicting one for Isaac Sayamalo to be a guy to help not only hold up in pass protection, but to also be a guy with force, with anger inside to help create a running game. So I'm giving my game ball in advance to Isaac Sayamalo. Tim, what about you? Mike, I'm going from the cuff on this one. Little known running back for our team. Been out the last couple of weeks with an injury, Tyler Anderson. Oh, good Huge call. player in the run game yeah. last year. And when he tore his ACL and we lost him, we lost a big advantage. I see Tyler coming back, being that lead blocker, maybe even getting into the screen game, the pass game himself, and making some plays when they give him the ball, but more importantly, being that big lead blocker that we've needed for Stormwoods. I like it. So Isaac, Tyler Anderson, Angie, your game ball from Wilson Motors. I'm going... I'm being different here. I am not going prediction. I'm so bad at crystal balls and <laughs> predictions. My game ball is going to Arico and the training staff because oh. they have had their hands full for weeks now. And uh, now to have this bye week, you have some guys back. 
Arico and the training staff. The game ball goes to you. Well done, Arico Iso, Doug, uh, Dr. Doug Ackerman, and the whole staff. They have done a tremendous job to help get the guys back ready for the big challenge on the Palouse this weekend after the bye. Coming up later, we'll hear from Brandon Cooks about his decision to become a Beaver. But next, we hear from Coach Mike Riley as he discusses with Tim Ewis the fly sweep. All of this and more on Talking Beavers. So far on the show, we've looked at that incredible Washington State-California game, the box score with all of the pass attempts and the yards and Washington State's big win. We've also talked about how the Beavers used the bye week to get healthier. Still to come on the show, Brandon Cooks himself, the nation's leading receiver, teaming with the nation's leading quarterback, getting ready for a big challenge this weekend on the road. We've also had Tim Ewis break down some plays for us. Our own Tim Ewis had a chance to sit down recently with head coach Mike Riley and talk about one of the staples in the Oregon State offense. Around football people, you tend to just talk ball and strategy and all those things. So what's the best idea that's ever come out of <laughs> one of those sessions? Is it the fly sweep? Is it the screen game with Norv? I mean, what, what's a big influence that you've said that made an impact on the way I coach? That's a tough one because, you know, that everything that you do is a culmination of either you know what you believe in doing what you've nurtured or what whoa that we we need to have something like that uh, the fly sweep was an interesting story didn't come about from that kind of a trip but just our kind of our staff exploring what else was out there and then having the exact right perfect person to do it with in James Rogers I mean the, that marriage was like made in heaven for but the now Beavers. You look for guys like that yeah, absolutely yeah. it becomes yeah. part of our identity and we we need a guy like that we I mean we're always saying this guy could be this kind of receiver and this guy could be this kind of receiver and a fly sweep guy I mean it becomes part of the definition of what we are looking for in recruiting and, and, and that's fun that's fun having a system that, you know, you can kind of, okay, this is how this guy will work here. Uh, Compared to when you first started in Valley. Yeah. You told me the story about pulling out the thesaurus for <laughs> names in the offense. And oh, that was fun now. <laughs> I mean, that was like the birth of the terminology of the, of the offense of the Beavers. And, and uh, it's all coded. And it all it all is supposed to have some kind of meaning. Now, if we were just if you and I were to tell somebody else this is the names of, they would say, "What in the <laughs> world is that?" But they all have some kind of a connection, and and sometimes now it's, we've been doing it so long, I've forgotten what the initial connection was. But that's just what it is. It's the name of the play. So that was really fun, though. Now that, it's the starting the of a job in football, a new program, is really really neat. I mean. And you only get to do that so many times in this business, so we're thankful for that. The fly sweep, you know, what a revelation it was, Tim, in 2007 with James Rogers running it. Brandon Cooks is coming up. He'll join us. He's been running it well. Victor Bolden may run it very well as his career goes along, but the thing I like most about the fly sweep is Mike Riley and Danny Langsdorf both set up front. They went and sat at the feet of Mark Speckman at Willamette, and he taught them some of the nuances of it. Football coaches love to share information. They really do. Everybody in the football world loves talking back and forth, and we call it just talking ball. Mm -hmm. Here we're talking beavers. They like talking football. And, and the thing that Speck brought to it, and I think is underestimated, is the effect they had on Jay Losey while well, he was coaching at Linfield, <laughs> having to face that offense right. all the time. And, and so Speck really mastered that thing. And he had a red light and a green light, and, and it told the back where to go and the, the wide receiver where to go. They haven't made it quite that complicated at Oregon State. But what it has done, Mike, has been similar to the zone replay, where you don't have to block a D end. Essentially, you're trying to figure out how to get a zone play or the fly sweep going without blocking a defender. And, and that's what the genius of that really kind of offensive concept really is. And Angie, you've talked about and we've seen, I mean, Victor Bolden, Brandon Cooks, we'll talk to Cooks about this when he joins us, but Victor and Cooks together on the field present a dilemma for defense. Big dilemma. I mean, they're both fast. They both have that, that juke ability. So defenders have to, have to be ready. And then you throw Mulaney and the tight ends in the mix and Kevin Cummings. It's, it's really hard to It's a to lot defend. of weapons, and the chief for Sean Mannion, Brandon Cooks, joins us next on Talking Beaver. It's time now for the Taco Bell Top 5. And there is hope that perhaps by the end of the weekend, 
There will be a new combination on the very top of this distinguished list with Sean Mannion and Brandon Cooks bearing down on great history at Oregon State. Some of the best passing catching combinations reflected in this week's Taco Bell Top 5. Derek Anderson to James Newsom, Derek Anderson to Mike Haas. The Heisman Trophy winner himself, Terry Baker to Vern Burke, Sean Canfield to James Rogers. But it is a delight to welcome a guy sitting with Sean Mannion, who joined us last week on Talking Beavers, a guy 16 touchdown catches with Sean Mannion, leading the nation in receiving yards, receptions, touchdowns, none other than Brandon Cooks himself. Brandon, thanks for joining thanks us. Thanks for having me. Thank you. What does it mean when you see your name on a list like that, knowing the tradition and the quarterback so uh, Eric Wilhelm and Rob Thomas with 17 connections here. You guys are one off of that. What are your thoughts when you see all those names? You know, it's intriguing. You know, um, I'm really excited because I feel like uh, all the hard work is starting to pay off and it's showing up, uh, you know, this season and uh, throughout my time with Sean. And uh, for us to be behind such great, uh, such a great quarterback and such a great connection, uh, that's just going to make us work harder so we can try to pass those guys up. Brandon, talk about all that time that connection the chemistry uh, you know there's all those quarterbacks have a connection with that star receiver what have you and Sean done to build that connection up you know it's nothing different you know this offseason um, you know I have to work out the whole summer uh, we, we made sure we threw every single day and maybe we would take a day off during the week uh, when our bodies beat up but we, we try not to miss a day and um, you know those days where we had the weekend off we'll still come out here on Sat uh, go out there on Saturday morning and um, have the whole receiving core out there and just throwing every day so I think it's just that 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 timing that we needed to get down and uh, so we can just connect better the, the quintessential timing route to me is the comeback yeah. And that's the one where anybody, not anybody, but a lot of people can throw a fade. A lot of mm -hmm. people can throw an angle, some, some type of crosser. But to throw the comeback and trust that you're going to be out of your break and for him to put the ball out there, how has all of those reps contributed to that over the course of the last I mean, few years? Um, it, it was one of those things that that's one of the hardest uh, routes to throw. It's just because you, you get so many different looks. You get press man, you get off man. And... Um, what, what he's looking for is just, you know, the beginning of my route because uh, he can tell um, by the beginning of my route where I will be uh, coming out of my break at the end. And I, may, I might just get bumped out of my route a little bit, but he knows he still has to put that ball towards the sideline so I only can get it. And um, it's either going to be a catch or an incomplete ball. So, so there's a yeah. huge trust factor it, between it definitely, the two. It definitely is a trust factor. Yeah. How big has it been with the other, the emergence of the other receivers? You know, Richard Mullaney, the tight ends, Kevin Cummings. How has that helped your game? For those guys to step up, it's definitely uh, fun to see because uh, the, the, all the work we put this offseason uh, has shown and uh, showed up on the field. In, in our play breakdown last week, they were playing three on two, and you guys have seen a lot of that. Three three defenders on the two of you out split wide. Mm -hmm. You know, they decided to take Richard too deep and play you man, you know, one on one. Do you see people being more willing to give up those underneath throws than the deep ball? Um, I, so far, um, from that last game, that's what I kind of, you know, we kind of saw when we watched film, but. Um, I don't know what they want to give up because I feel like we have guys that can catch an underneath route and, you know, take it the distance. Um, but they don't want to give up the deep ball to Richard. So it's just one of those things It's week in, week out where uh, they're just going to have to pick who they, want to, who they want to guard. Brandon, in our last segment, we looked at a play that's become a real staple in the Beavers system since 2007 when James Rogers first hit it big and helped win a Civil War, the fly sweep. Yeah. It struck me that, I don't know if the play had plateaued this year early, but it strikes me as you guys found a different dimension to it against Colorado and beginning to run it with some of that old vigor. You yeah. know what I'm talking yeah, about? Yeah, I know exactly what you're talking about. Uh, I think I, I guess it was just, uh, you know, Coach Cav just harping on those guys that we need to get this run game going somehow, whether it's, you know, getting... Uh, the Zeta ball on the fly sweep or uh, running a guy, uh, running a running back out the backfield. But we knew we had to get some yards on the ground somehow. And um, this uh, last week, it was the fly sweep. And it was it was really fun to see that uh, some holes open up and get some big gains out of that. And uh, just reminding me of the days where I used to watch James run it. And so it, it was fun to see. Yeah. How about James? I mean, I know you guys were close when he was yeah. here, and he kind of took you under his wing. Yeah. How is he, you know, have you kept in contact with him? Always. We uh, we actually, uh, we talk every Monday. Um, 
of, of the following game. He had watched film, and he had called me, and he had his tip sheet, and I have my, have my pencil ready on what he has to say about the game. So uh, we keep in touch, basically. You know, a couple days a week, we always talk, and he's doing great, and uh, he's working hard on the practice squad, trying to, wake, trying to make his way into the depth chart uh, on game day. Now, there's been a tradition of that at Oregon State between receivers, yeah. between running backs. There's always kind of a mentor and a mentee. Yeah. Now, James was your mentor. Who are you putting time in with? Who's going to be that next great Victor, Victor Bolden. Victor Bolden. We, we've talked about him yes. as a fly sweet yes. potential guy. He's got a little shape to yeah. him, got a little speed. Yeah. What do you like in his game, his work ethic? He, he just reminds me of myself when I came in. He's hungry. Uh, he wants to be great. He wants to play. Uh, he, he wants to fit in however he can. And uh, what, what's great about Victor is he's, he's, he's kind of small, but he will make you miss. You will never get a solid tackle on that kid because he's always he's just so you know flexible and just uh, so limber. So um, it, what's exciting to see, he has great routes. You know, he came in here uh, with the understanding of the pro-style offense, and um, he, he has so much potential and he has that work ethic to be such a great receiver here. Brandon, when you got here, Tell me a little bit about how you developed and maybe what James Rogers told you and other people told you, because you came in obviously with gifts and a commitment and a vision to get better. You went from 31 catches as a freshman to 67 last year, already at 52 through five games. That's a tremendous progression. Victor Bolden hasn't quite yet been as active as you were as a freshman. What can Victor do? What do you tell him? What did James tell you about getting better day to day? Well, you know, I, I feel like it was just a, it's a little different story when uh, when I was a freshman because, you know, unfortunately James was hurt for the first three to four games. So I had, you know, those three to four games actually playing every snap. Whereas Victor, uh, he, you know, he's sort of like behind me now. And um, it, it's more of a mentoring way of getting his feet wet in a kick return game. And, um, you know, those, those plays where I'm tired or where I feel like he needs to get in the game and to sh showcase his talent, it's a little different. But um, I, my, my biggest thing with him is to learn coverages early and to watch film and be able to pick up on coverages, you know, like that. I feel like that was my problem, uh, you know, early in my career where it took me longer than uh, what it's taking him um, picking up coverages. Brandon, something that's been very impressive to me and I just wonder where it comes from internally, just to find out a little bit more about you, what you value, what you believe. You're very confident about the gifts and talents you have, but you're also humble. What's the balance between being thankful for the opportunity to do what you do, but also knowing when you line up against somebody, you can go beat them? Uh, I mean, it's just my faith is unbelievable with God, and I just feel like, you know, um, he, he always tells me you, you can be confident, but you know there's there's a there's a thin line between confident and cocky, and um, you can't you can't go into a game scared. You know you can't fear anyone. And uh, w once I put the helmet on and I strap my pads up, I just, I, just, I just feel like I I work so hard that you know um, why would I let someone else stop me? And um, it's just one of those inner things that is between me and God, I feel like. I, I've always yeah. loved that term, fine line between yeah. confidence and cockiness. Yeah. And I, you're a football player, yeah. and you're not a track guy. You're fast, you got shake, but you're a football player. Yeah. And I saw that. Do you remember the play when your helmet came off as a freshman and you're running oh, downfield, yeah. no helmet <laughs> on? I mean, that was one of those moments yeah. that I said, that guy yeah. is a baller. Yeah. What is that that makes you tick that says, I don't care if I have a helmet on, I'm going to run downfield? <laughs> to be honest, it was the first game, and I'm trying to prove that I can play at this level. Um, so you might be smart enough now to not run. No, with no, <laughs> no, I wouldn't do that. You've been following this young man through the whole recruiting process. I know you... <coughs> And everyone in Beaver Nation grateful that he ended up here, but it, it, it wasn't a slam dunk right from the start. No, I, we, we talked about this a little bit before. Brianna was committed to UCLA, took a trip to Oregon State. And I don't, was that Coach Losey, Coach Hayward? Coach Losey. They, they yeah. got you to talk into it. Mm -hmm. And I remember talking to you, it was a Sunday night after your trip. And you tell me, we're talking, we're talking pretty soon. You're like, okay, I committed. But you can't go with can't that because I haven't <laughs> talked to Coach Neuheisel yet. Are you happy with that decision? And I, I did. I did not report <clears throat> it until he texted me the next day and said it was good to go. Are you yeah. happy with that decision? I'm, 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 I'm very thankful. I'm very glad on the decision I made just because, uh, 
I met so many great people around here and the, and the support group around here is it, unbelievable. And I just feel like being in a college town like this, it's, it's really fun. You don't, you don't get this, you know, in everyday life uh, where everything is basically about you. Where, whereas L.A. is such a big city. You got NFL talked. teams. Yeah. I remember you you're talking about. Week. It's the people. Yeah. It's the people. But you talked that UCLA was your dream school. It was. But yeah. that your head was telling you Oregon State was a better yeah. fit. Yeah. yeah. Um, and, and that came down to the pro-style offense, you know, and Coach Riley and uh, his system. You know, I saw success come out of James Rogers and, and a lot of guys who uh, wasn't, quote, unquote, uh, that big receiver. And, um, you know, that was intriguing to me, and I felt like I could come in here and, uh, and, and contribute early. Brandon, we are thrilled to have you here. I know all of Beaver Nation is. Thanks for joining Thank us you. here tonight. Have a great time Thank on you. the Palouse. We'll have more with Brandon, in fact, a little bit later with run and catch still to come. One thing the Beavers must do to beat Washington State next, talking Beavers from Flat Tail. There's no such thing as too much beaver coverage, and we have you covered throughout the week, not only this show, but Friday night, hashtag Beavers football at 8 p.m. right here on Comcast Sportsnet. Then Saturday, a full day of coverage, beginning with game day at 9 in the morning and post-game live at 10.30. We've got you covered. Very few people have found a way to cover Brandon Cooks in 2013. We certainly enjoyed visiting with Brandon earlier. Now we get more with Brandon Cooks in our weekly installment of run and catch and just what Storm and Brandon do to get prepared for a game from a superstition standpoint. So what's your superstitions? Uh, first on game day, always, you know, thinking of the man upstairs, you know, with all those blessings. And then secondly, you know, the other superstition is coming to mess with you and praying with you before the game. Uh, um, first of all, I, I, pro I probably have too many. Uh, one of my huge ones is uh, painting my toenails the color of the opponent, you know, every week. And um, another one is probably reading my Bible and obviously calling my mom before the game and telling her I love her. And then, um, pray and then go out there on the field. Favorite Mike Riley moment? Well, I mean, I, I think it's everyone's favorite. Uh, after after we get a win and we head into the locker room, he does his, you know, his hip hip array. And um, so that, that's definitely my favorite Coach Riley moment. And uh, we're looking forward to a lot of those this year. Uh, I have to agree. I yeah. mean, it's a lot of them, but that hip hip array is nothing like it. I mean, it means victory for us. And like you said, we got to get a lot of those hip hip arrays. Hey. Certainly has been a joy to get to know these two young men, two of the finest I've ever been around in Oregon State Athletics in Storm Woods and Brandon Cooks. We've seen a lot of the catch part in run and catch, and now we're going to see Storm getting back involved in the run game on the field this weekend, Tim. But just to have a, a man of Storm Woods' stature all the way from Pflugerville, Texas. He had to make a commitment to come to Corvallis for his visit. He got here, and he said, yeah, I want to be a beaver. A lot of young men make that decision once they get here, but sometimes just getting them to make that visit can be the tricky part. Huh? Getting here can be the toughest part, Mike. I talked about that on my blog on CSNNW.com this week. The, the recruiting process is tricky, and sometimes it comes down to actually getting somebody on campus and Beaver Nation supporting it. And they, you don't realize how big of a part Beaver Nation plays in this. And, and it's the people, Mike. That's what sells Corvallis. That's what sells Oregon State. Until that point, it's just a coach showing up in your front room at your house. You know, we've heard, we heard Brandon himself talk about the family atmosphere. And you know that, Angie. But I don't think we should sell the football part of it short either because Brandon said, too, the system in the end really the called out to him. The system's huge, you know, and, and the people can sell the program and you get here on campus, it's a small campus, small college town, I guess, but it's the system. Oregon State runs that pro-style system that gets guys in the league. Look at the numbers. I mean, you have Sean Mannion and Brandon Cooks leading the NC2A. Mm -hmm. They're getting guys into the next level. And it's not just on offense either. I mean, look at all the defensive players that Mark Banker's system has sent to the NFL. So get them to Corvallis. They'll love it. But they'll also, they'll love the football once they get here. Coming up next on Talking Beavers, we give you our one thing that the Beavers must do to defeat the Cougars. It's time for the one thing. And it's usually more than one thing that a team has to do, Tim, to win a football game. The Beavers have managed to find a way to win two on the road. So has Washington State, to its credit. But for the Beavers to go to Pullman, a place they haven't lost since 2003, 
come out of it with a win, what's the one thing they need to do? You know, we've talked chemistry, character, run blocking, rushing the football. The one thing this week that it comes down to is turnovers. In 2003, when we lost, we had some untimely interceptions. Sean Manny has done a great job of taking care of the ball this season. He continues that, and we hold on to the ball at running back, Mike. Huge key to victory. That's my one thing. Connor Halliday was pressured by Stanford and did not have a good experience at Century Link. So for me, the one thing would be pressure the quarterback, release the Crichton, make it difficult for him to get the ball out on time as he is so effective at doing. If he has time, he'll pick you apart as he showed last week in Berkeley. So my one thing, get pressure on Halliday, bring different looks, different blitzes, different coverages, and get after him a la Stanford. That's my one thing. What about you, Angie? Mike, I was going to go with that. So <laughs> I'm going with the run game. And, and we talk run game, and, you know, Beavers haven't had a lot of success maybe on the ground. But in my mind, a screen, any of those, any of those types of things, just get that going so they're not relying on a deep pass to help prevent some of those interceptions. So take care of the football. Don't turn over the football and rush and the rush football. Ball. It sounds like a recurring theme every week. <laughs> and attack Connor Halliday and make life difficult for him. The, the one thing that's interesting to me about this matchup is it is in Pullman. This was supposed to be the Seattle game and they would play either Oregon or Oregon State every year at Century Link for various reasons. And I've been told it's more for schedule reasons than anything else. The Seattle game this year featured Stanford. Me think somehow at my gut level Mike Leach would rather play the Beavers on the Palouse than Seattle. Do you do you track with me on that? I agree, Mike. The clink is is a good opportunity for those guys to play in front of, you know, some of their fan base in Seattle. But, you know, a guy I played with, Troy Benneman, down at, at Arizona. He's a, a Washington State grad. He had a real hard time with having a home game basically in Huskyville, and he's never agreed with it. I think they'll be moving away from that, and I don't think Bill Moose liked that decision in the first place. Well, well there's so many Beaver fans that make the trip. Right, you know, I mean, so and Corvallis easier. is closer to Seattle than Pullman is to Seattle. We have Seattle. a lot of Beaver fans in Seattle, Portland, so it's a, an easy trip for those folks. But one of the beautiful places in the world, the Palouse. So Beaver Nation, get up there, make your presence felt. It should be a lot of fun. We'll be here to talk about it next week. We'll be back to see just what unfolded at Martin Stadium on the Palouse next week 